Romeo, come forth. Come forth, fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? With sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not. Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What worse than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. <laughs> banishment? Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world outside Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence, banished is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banished is death mistermed. Culling death banishment, thou cuts my head off with a golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. Deadly sin, a rude unthankfulness. Thy fault, our law calls death. But the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word, death, into banishment. This is dear mercy, thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here, where Juliet lives. And every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo, Romeo may not. More validity, more honorable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than in Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blush as thinking their own kiss is sin. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Flies can do this, but I from this must fly. They are free men, but I am banished. And sayest thou yet that exile is not death? Hadst thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it, friar, the damned, use that word in hell. Howling, attended. How hast thou the heart? Being a divine, the ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend profess to mangle me with that word banish it. Fog madman, hear me a little speak. Thou wilt speak again of banishment. I will give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy. To comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet, yeah, banish it! Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet. Displant a town, reverse the prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. When I see that madman have no ears. How can they, when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt, murdered, doting like me, and like me banish it, then might thou speak, then might thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise, when Knox. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Not I, unless the breath of heart sick groans mist like enfold me from the search of eyes. Hark, how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, arise, thou wilt be taken. Stay, Omaya. Stand up. Wrench my study. Oh, my. Oh, God's will. What simpleness is this? I come. I come. Who watched so hard? What's come to you? What's your will? Let me come in, and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Oh, holy friar! Oh, tell me, holy friar, where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? There, on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he's even in my mistress' case, just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy, pretty's predicament. Even she lies blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up. Stand up. Stand and you be a man.
For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an oh? Nurse. Ah, oh, sir, death's the end of all. Uh, speak us out, Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer now I have stained the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she? And how does she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? She says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her. As that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, Friar. Tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion. Whoa! Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman and a seeming man, and ill be seeming beast in seeming both. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself, and slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself? Oh, why railest thou on thy birth, the heavens and earth, since birth and heaven and earth, all three do meet in the at once which thou at once wouldst lose? Fie! Fie! Thou shamest thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Which, like a, a usurer, abounds in all, and uses none in their true use indeed that should be debt thy shape, thy love, thy wit. A noble shape is but a form of wax digressing from the valor of a man. Thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury, killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish. Thy wit, that ornament to shape and love, misshapen in the conduct of the both. Like powder in a skill of soldier's flask is set afire by thine own ignorance, and thou dismembered with thine own defense. What? Rouse thee, man. Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest a Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend, turning it to exile. There art thou happy. Pack of blessings lights upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array, but like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou pouts upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed, for such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love. Hence, ascend her chamber and comfort her. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find the time to blaze thy marriage. Reconcile thy friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse, commend thee to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. My Lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Oh, sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. How you make haste, for it grows very late. Oh, how, well, how well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Good night. And here stands all thy state. Either before the watch be set, be gone, or else by break of day, disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua. I will find out your man, and he shall from time to time signify every good hap to you that chances here. Leave thy hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. 
but that a joy, past joy, calls out on me. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. <laughs>